to 45, NC State 42. Post-game win expectancy, Wake Forest 76%. Uh, Wake can win the Atlantic by beating either Clemson or BC. If you lose both, uh, Clemson is going to go. Bottom line. Like that's and I cannot believe that we are at this point in the season where Clemson is still a viable option. And yet, I mean, that defense is still really, really damn good. But you start looking at some of these numbers. NC State outgained Wake Forest last night, four eighty two to four oh six. Um, but you know, three turnovers for NC State that ended up turning into seven points. Three turnovers for Wake that turned into no points. I mean, that's the difference in the ball game. So, you, you look at some of these numbers, uh, rushing yards, NC State was only able to muster up 74 rushing yards on that Wake Forest defense. They threw for 408. Now, a lot of this was late. The biggest difference in this game is the hidden yardage. The hidden yardage was penalties this time. 14 penalties for 119 yards against NC State. Wake had five for 50. Again, difference in the ball game. Like it's, Wake it's just doesn't beat insane. themselves ever. I was so disappointed they didn't get to 50. You have no idea how bad I wanted them to get to 50. When, when they started scoring late again, I was like, son of a bitch, he's going to be he's gonna nail this on the head. And they <laughs> still blew close, the though. over out. The total was 61 and a half. What are we doing? Like, when are the books going to have the balls to give us an 80 or 90 point total with this team? Are they ever going to do it? I doubt it, because the, maybe against Boston College, maybe, but I doubt but, it. This is the free. That's just the freest money in all the land. It's just hammer over, hammer over, hammer over. They're hitting the overs by halftime. Yeah. Now they didn't. They didn't have it by halftime in this game, but they had it. Holy shit! I just lost my camera. They, but they did have it. But they did have it. I'm still with you guys. They did. There we go. I did have it uh, by like early in the second, the third quarter. Yes. Very, very well, early. I, and it was never in doubt. Like, at halftime, I fully understood this was ball game. Yes. Sam Hartman. Like the over was the total. Sam Hartman. I I love Sam Hartman. I love what he does. But in this game. Oh, it's really good. 20 out of 47. That ain't yeah. great. 43% nope. completion percentage. Had three touchdowns and three interceptions. And still, his QBR was over 100. 102.7. <laughs> like, I... Sometimes these numbers don't make sense, but you this look is, at what he was this able to is do. The be- this is the best defense they've played all year. Yeah, by far. And, and, and we close. talked about that in the preview of this game. This was going to be the best defense Wake's played all year. Yes, yes. Uh, Devin Leary on the other side, 37 out of 59, 408 yards, four mm-hmm. touchdowns, two interceptions. This um, might be the softest defense he plays all year, and that didn't work out well for him yeah. still. I mean, they still put up 42 points, but... Yeah, hey, yeah but you know what? If he doesn't turn the football over, they probably win this game, though. Yeah. Yes, 100%. I mean, because they got three turnovers off Wake Forest. Like, if they had been able to capitalize on even one of them, they then they win. Fine. Like, they, they win yeah. the game if they capitalize on that's, one of them. That's the difference in the game. Yeah. Yes. And Derek Miller, we see your uh, your quote there. Brown Yeti said next year State's going to be a monster. Uh, Derek said he was just quoting Lane uh, and then yeah, Alabama yeah, smashed I got, it. I got, I got yeah, that. We, we got it. But we, got, <laughs> we got the popcorn references. Just don't, just don't, just don't eat popcorn for Thanksgiving. That's yes, all. 100%. <laughs> I'll just be dis- the fat guy and me will be very disappointed in you. Uh, Wake Forest did have eight tackles for loss in this game. So, like, they, we, we talk about their offense all the time. That defense is is not great, but they are aggressive. Their, def- their defensive line, their front – I don't want to say front seven because I don't think they have seven dudes that are good, but they've got four, but they're just not all D linemen. Are, are, they'll get after you. Yes, and they're very aggressive. They, but that's the thing. like Because they score 50 every game, they don't have to stop you every drive. They just need a stop here or a stop there. That's all they need. Yes. Yes. That one extra possession is the difference in so many of these games. And that's all it took in this game. When they lost the turnover battle, I thought, shit, that's going to be it. But they got a stop when they needed to get a stop. They got the extra score when they needed to get the extra score. I never worry about them being able to get the extra score. Never. Right. It was the, it was the getting the stops when you've turned the ball over and given them the extra possessions that I, that I worried about. Yeah. Yeah, you uh, you were not wrong about that. Uh, NC State did miss a field goal uh, early in this, but at the same time, that would that would have gotten them the cover, wouldn't it? 
that would have made this one point win? No, I mean it was forty five forty two. So I mean that, that oh, would have yeah, no, made it. That wouldn't have However, anything at all because it was one and a half line. Right? On, on the same token, Wake Forest did, of course, have like a missed field, whatever. Like they they did not hit a field goal when they attempted it in the second quarter. So, you think somebody's going to snack up Clawson? I think so. I think, I think I so. I, I I will tell you this. It all depends on his mindset. Like I, he has got a cush job at Wake Forest. I, like, I completely agree with that. By the way, so and I think the the mentality of coaches has changed. Like if he feels like and if he, the Lee Corsos of the world have their way, all you have to do is win the ACC and you get in the playoffs. Well, it's not just the Lee Corsos. It's also oh I know that all I know the that. commissioners. I know that's, that's, like, that's it's it's not just the Lees. It's all of the people that run college football, because it doesn't matter who you play. If your brand is big enough, then we just assume you're better. We say you're better enough. See, so I'm going to go on a little rant here. I had a conversation with a friend of mine who's a big Mississippi State fan. So we understand the biases. And he talked about how he's so sick of hearing that the Grove is the greatest tailgate place in the country. And I said, well, here's how you get that. Because I've been in the Grove many, many, many times, and I've never had a bad time at the Grove. But I don't know that it's the best tailgate I've ever seen or had, but the problem is, is you're told that it's the best over and over and over again. And then you go there and you have a good time. And so you assume, well, it's got to be the best, but then you start breaking it down. Every meal I've ever had in the Grove has been nothing but just like cold Abner's chicken. (laughs) And I'm thinking, you know what? Like that might be some of the shittiest food I've ever had. And eat what? So, because nobody cooks out, you don't ever have a because they, they won't let you have fire. They won't let you have you, your grills and stuff there. So it's just a bunch of tents with a ton of people crammed into a beautiful area when all those tents are not there. It's a lot like Disney World. It'd probably be a hell of a lot different or better if you just made all the half these people leave. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. How anyway. did we get on 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 that? I, it was, I it, it's just a matter of. <laughs> If you say something enough, we just assume that it's true because nobody I – mean, it's the definition of gaslighting. Okay, I get, I get what you're but saying. It's, but we're talking about – we still use words like the Power Five, and even though I hate that concept, I despise it and I have for years, I still use it because it's the way everybody else understands what I'm trying to say. And so I have to change my terminology and things that I don't agree with to to – have a conversation with people in a way that they understand it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can, I, I understand exactly but where you're coming from. That's a problem because the ACC does not deserve to be considered power anything right now. The PAC 12 does not consider to be power anything right now. The, uh, the most likely ACC championship game right now will be played in Charlotte, North Carolina between Wake Forest and Pittsburgh. And you're telling it's me be amazing. That, I would tell you this. That's what we deserve, by the way. Oh, it's going to be that's a great going game to be an amazing game. That's the game we all deserve. And if Wake does somehow lose out and they miss out on that, it's it's the kick in the nuts at the end of college football that we don't want. Right. No, I, I agree with you 100 percent. Like I, I had uh, so Parker texted me yesterday and, and was talking about chaos because we were yep. talking about the fact that Alabama could end up winning the SEC West without ever having to play the Auburn game. Like they can wrap it up against Arkansas next week, and he yeah, said, "Thanks to the state of Mississippi yeah. last night." He said, "It's just complete chaos." And I said, "Yeah, with the least chaotic ending. Like if we end up with Clemson winning the ACC and and Alabama or Georgia winning the SEC and Ohio State winning the Big Ten, like this, I don't know that that's what anybody necessarily wants, uh, other than TV networks. Like that's it. I just it's it's." A little bit frustrating. If all of that happens, we have to, we we cannot compare it to 2007. No, it won't be anything like 2007 at that point. We, it was just a wild year that ended up chalk. Well, it, in 2007, still kind of ended up chalk. I mean, remember it was Ohio State and LSU playing for the national title. Like it was just the the way that we got but there. LSU in November wasn't was preseason not. ranked number one or two in the country. Yeah, they were they were way up there. They were like at least top three, and I think I no, think they I were actually. I, I don't remember that. I thought they were. I knew they were top five, but I don't remember they were. One or two. So, but they, they, I mean, they had been number one basically all season, but they had the two losses in overtime and, and it took a whole lot of other undefeated crap in regulation. There. Yeah. November was, was chaos. November was crazy that season. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we will get that again this season. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini. 
at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.